Indica versus Sativa, right? For years, this one simple choice was supposed to tell you everything about your cannabis experience. But what if that simple rule we've all been following is just flat out wrong? Today, we're going to find out why it's time for a major upgrade. Yep, this is the one, the easy button we've all used. Indica means you're in the couch, getting ready to chill out, while Sativa is your go-to for an energetic, creative buzz. It's simple, it's memorable, and for a really long time, it was the only guide we had. But here's the thing. When it comes to actually predicting your experience, it's mostly a myth. Yeah, you heard that right. In today's market, relying on this simple split is like trying to navigate a modern city using a map from the 1800s. It just doesn't work anymore. So how did we even get here? To understand why the rule is so broken, we have to rewind a bit and look at where these labels actually came from. And trust me, it's probably not what you think. This quote right here really nails it. These terms, indica and sativa, were never about effects to begin with. They were botanical labels. They just described what a plant looked like, you know, short and bushy or tall and lanky, and what part of the world it originally came from. They were never, ever meant to be a menu of effects. Okay, so if the labels are just about how a plant looks, why don't they predict the experience anymore? Well, the answer lies in decades and decades of cultivation and nonstop crossbreeding. This timeline pretty much tells the whole story. Back in the day, you had land races. These were genetically pure plants from specific regions. But then the crossbreeding frenzy began. Growers started mixing everything together to chase certain traits like higher potency, tastier favors, or bigger yields. And the result today? Almost everything you can buy is a complex hybrid, a total genetic mashup that makes those original, simple labels pretty much meaningless. All right, so if the old way is out, what's the new way? It's all about chemistry. Seriously. It means ignoring the catchy marketing name on the front and instead learning how to read the product's actual chemical profile right there on the label. The key is to start thinking about a plant's chemovar. And I know, that sounds super scientific, but it just means its unique chemical profile. This is what truly predicts your experience. It's really determined by three main things. Terpenes, the ratio of cannabinoids like THC and CBD, and all those other minor compounds. So let's break that down. First up, you've got terpenes. These are the aromatic oils that give cannabis its amazing smells, from piney and citrusy to berry and diesel. The best way to think of them is like the aroma notes in a good wine or a fresh bag of coffee. They create the flavor for sure, but we now know they also play a huge role in shaping the actual effects of a product. Now, you do not need to be a chemist, but knowing just a few of the big players can be a total game changer. Marcine, for example, is often associated with calming effects. Limonene, just like it sounds, can feel more uplifting. Pining can sometimes feel focusing, and linalool, which you also find in lavender, is usually linked to relaxation. But terpenes are only part of the story. The next piece of the puzzle is the cannabinoid ratio. And this one is huge. The ratio of THC to CBD is basically your intensity dial. THC is what drives the main psychoactive feeling, while CBD is non-psychoactive and can actually help balance out or soften the intensity of THC. Understanding this balance is absolutely crucial to finding an experience that's just right for you. This chart makes it super clear. A product with a ton of THC and very little CBD is likely going to feel pretty potent, maybe even intense. A balanced one-to-one -one ratio of THC to CBD? That often gives you a much smoother, more moderate experience. And a CBD-forward product is typically very gentle, which is perfect for anyone who wants effects without a strong psychoactive feel. And this all ties into a really cool idea called the entourage effect. Basically, it's the theory that all of these compounds, THC, CBD, other minor cannabinoids, and all those terpenes, they all work together synergistically. Think of it like a band. THC might be the lead singer, but the terpenes and other cannabinoids are the rest of the musicians, creating a richer, more nuanced sound than the singer could ever create alone. Okay, so that's the science. Now let's make it practical. Here is your actionable four-step guide to take with you on your next dispensary visit so you can walk in and shop with total confidence. It's really this simple. First, pick a vibe. Decide what kind of feeling you're even looking for, social and creative, or calm and relaxed. Second, choose a profile. Match that vibe to a chemical profile by looking for specific terpenes and the right THC to CBD ratio. Third, read the COA, the Certificate of Analysis, to confirm what the lab results say. 
And finally, and this is the most important step of all, journal the results. A simple note about what you tried and how it felt is gonna be your absolute best guide for the future. When you follow those steps, you stop relying on outdated marketing terms and you start building your own personal guide. You actually become your own expert because you're using real hard data. So here's the bottom line. You shop by Chemovar, by the chemical profile. Think of Endica and Sativa as just style names now, kind of like IPA or lager in the beer aisle. They might give you a general idea, but they don't tell you the specific ingredients or the alcohol percentage. The real information is in the chemistry. Okay, let's lock this in. One, the old labels describe a plant's history, not your future. Two, your new focus should be on terpenes and cannabinoid ratios. Three, the Certificate of Analysis, or COA, is your new best friend. It's the nutrition label for your cannabis. And four, the most reliable guide in the entire world is the data you collect on your own experiences. And that's really the final takeaway here. This isn't about memorizing every single terpene. It's about shifting your mindset from being a passive consumer to an active explorer. Start paying attention to the chemistry, track your own results, and you will be able to curate your experience with amazing precision. So the only question left is, what will your personal data tell you?